The Book of Mormon is one of the most widely distributed books on earth, with over 150 million copies being in print. But very few people understand how the Book of Mormon originated and how it got to its present publication. A lot of people know that the book exists today and they see it in its current form and they think that perhaps that's the way it was all along, but in fact it has improved over time with various changes being made in the format of the book in order to make it more accessible to readers. We tell the story in this book of how the Book of Mormon originated and how it changed from major edition to major edition. It's a fascinating story. It's a story of people's lives, people's devotion to the Word of God and, and their devotion to helping people get the Word of God to them. Uh, it's not just a mere facts and figures, but and we've also created a book that will allow people to have a journey on their own, and it's a visual journey as well as hearing and reading about the stories of the people's lives uh, in getting the Book of Mormon that we read now. And today, of course, we use computers to print books, but in the early days, they had to take each letter from a type case and set it on a line and then set that line into a frame. And then once they had a whole galley full of typeset, they had to break that up into pieces and make larger sets of letters that could then be printed. And that laborious process, the letterpress pro process of going letter by letter in typesetting, introduced errors into the Book of Mormon. Those errors were later corrected at various stages. So we talk about these changes that occur in the Book of Mormon over time, giving us what is today the most correct version of the most correct book. I think many people don't understand what a huge publication project the first edition of the Book of Mormon was. It was, to that point, the largest publication project in the history of the county. And for a poor farmer like Joseph Smith to produce a manuscript and then get it printed during that time period in such a large edition was a very daunting task. Many people know that Martin Harris lost the 116 pages of the initial Book of Mormon translation, but they don't stop to realize that had it not been for Martin Harris, the book would not have been published at all. I think people need to, uh, I think once they realize it, that the version they're reading now is not the first is not the same as the first version. When we go to Sunday school class and we or priesthood and we read uh, and we say turn to Third Nephi two chapter three, well they couldn't do that with the first version. It was all just written out as a narrative, and it took uh, many different uh, people over time to get to the chapter and verse and the nice and the nice dictionary. Uh, footnotes at the end that we have now that, that we sort of assume and uh, that wasn't the way right off. I can't even imagine what a Sunday school class would have been like if they'd had Sunday school class. You know, okay, turn to the page 342, halfway down uh, in the center of the uh, page there's this. You know, the fact that we're so so able to use it as a teaching tool now is because of that history. I think readers today may run the risk of taking the Book of Mormon for granted. By which I mean that today we have the Book of Mormon easily accessible to us in inexpensive paperbacks and finely bound editions. We have the Book of Mormon on our, our smartphones. We have it available online. And that easy access may lead us to underappreciate the book or to underappreciate the sacrifices that it took to get the book to us.